What's up guys? So today I've got my hands on the brand new B-Link SEI 12 Pro. Now priced at around 500, this mini PC is powered by a 12th gen Intel i5 12 core processor along with DDR5 RAM and this also features Thunderbolt 4 and lots lots more. So first of all inside the box you will find a user manual. We've got a metal bracket so you can mount this thing to the wall or even at the back of your monitor and it comes with a bunch of screws as well. You get a short and long HDMI cable included. This comes with a power cable and a full laptop sized power supply and I'll give you a close up of the voltage information. And last but not least, the mini PC itself. So the mini PC is made from a complete metal body and we do have mesh grills on both sides for air circulation and on top we have a rather nice breathable fabric finish and you can see in the corner it says B-Link SEI. On the front we've got the i5 sticker along with a clear CMOS hole, two USB 3 ports, a Type-C Thunderbolt 4 port, we've got a combo headphone and mic jack and a physical power button. If we keep going, nothing on this side. And on the back, we've got a 2.5 gigabit per second ethernet port, two more USB 3 ports. We've got two HDMI outs and a power socket. And if we keep going, nothing on this side. And that brings us back to the front. And this is how the bottom of the box looks like. And you can see some handy instructions on how to access the BIOS and the boot up options. All right, so quickly run through the specs. So this mini PC is powered by the Intel i5 1240p, that's a 12 core processor clocked at 1.7 gigahertz base. For graphics we have integrated Intel Iris Xe G7 graphics, you're also getting 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, um, upgradable to 64 gigs. You've got a 500 gigabyte M.2 NVMe SSD, that is PCIe 4.0, and that's upgradable to two terabytes max. There is also room for two and a half inch SATA expansion. This mini PC does support Wi-Fi 6 AC. You've got 2.5 gigabit per second LAN, Bluetooth 5.2, Thunderbolt 4. This comes pre-installed with Windows 11 Professional. This supports triple 4K display output. So you've got your two HDMI ports and you've got the Thunderbolt 4 to give you that triple 4K display output. This also has a dual cooling fan system. So one for the CPU and one to cover the RAM and SSD. And yes, this does support 4K at 60 Hertz. All right, just wanna quickly show you the internal so we can see the upgrade options. Remove the four screws. Okay, lift it from the silicone tab. And the back cover made from metal just comes right off, nice and easy. You can now see there is a cooling fan right there and you've got your SATA connection in case you wanted to fit a hard drive um, it does say please do not block it so if you do install a SATA hard drive you are most likely going to block that fan so, so meanwhile I'm just going to remove three more screws one two and three so we can remove the fan cover here we go there is a ribbon cable attached to the SATA connection um, and you can see another cable here for the fan. So first of all, let's check out the RAM. You can see crucial branded RAM. Configuration is eight gigabytes times two to give us 16 gigs of DDR5 RAM and that is dual channel RAM. And over here you can see your 500 gigabyte NVMe PCI 4.0 SSD drive. And if I just peel that off slightly, you can see it's Kingston branded. So I really like how B-Link always give nice and easy upgrade options, so making it future-proof. So without any further ado, I'm gonna get this all set up and we're gonna run a series of tests, including gaming, emulation, benchmarks, and lots, lots more. And we're gonna find out exactly how good this thing performs. I'll be right back. Now, first of all, I ran a boot up speed test and this mini PC took exactly 7.8 seconds to fully load to the Windows 11 desktop. Now quick look at the BIOS. To enter BIOS you just reboot pressing the delete button and if you want to enter the boot options you reboot pressing the F7 buttons. So here are the BIOS settings and under advanced you can see you have many options to play with and this should give you a pretty good idea on what to expect from this system. Also secure boot is available as that is needed for some games like FIFA 23 to actually work. So this is the full version of Windows 11 Professional. I am connected to my 4K capture card. So desktop resolution you can see is set to 3840 by 2160. Now let's check out the system properties. So as you can see, it is Windows 11 Professional with the 12th gen Intel Core i5 
1240p clocked at 1.7 gigahertz. We've got 16 gigs of RAM, 64-bit OS, and it is already activated and ready to use. And if we look at system storage info, we have 500 gigs of internal storage from which 463 gigs are usable. And from that, we have 427 gigs free to use. And the second drive you are seeing is my 128 gig flash drive, which contains all my 4K samples, which we are going to be testing right now. So let's go ahead and play some 4K video samples from a USB drive using the default media player. And first video is Hyperdrate 4K Jellyfish demo. That's 160 megabits per second. And you can see it's playing absolutely fine. No problems here. Next, I tested the 180 megabits per second 4K Jellyfish sample. And that also played very well. And the real test, 400 megabits per second Hyperdrate Jellyfish sample also played superb. So no issues playing high bitrate 4K from USB. Okay, so now we're going to test a few 4K60 HDR video samples from USB. Okay, so moving on to some video streaming on YouTube, and yes, it does support 4K60 with HDR. And as you guys can see, streaming quality and performance is top notch with no issues. So let's go ahead and play a few more trailers. My name's Sonny Vaccaro, I'm with Nike. Do you typically make it a habit of showing up at people's front doors unannounced? I don't like to take no for an answer. So next up, I loaded up Netflix, and yes, I can confirm Netflix does support 4K streaming. Furthermore, same with Amazon Prime Video, 4K streaming working absolutely fine. So you've got 4K streaming across the board. All right, so now we're going to move on to some gaming, starting off with GTA 5. And here are the graphic settings. So we've got the resolution set to 1080p 60, we've got VSync off, and the overall graphics are set to very high. So as you can see, we're achieving around 50 frames per second average, with the TDP going up to around 37 watts. The Intel graphics are also being pushed quite hard at around 95%, and CPU temperatures are at around 76 degrees. So GTA is playing pretty smooth at this resolution and graphic settings. Okay, so let's try something a bit more recent. So here we're testing WWE 2K22, and here are the graphic settings. So 1080p resolution, 60 hertz, texture quality is set to standard, and everything else is set to medium. And as you can see, the game is not playable. We are achieving 30 frames per second, and the TDP is too low at only 9.5 watts. The game is absolutely struggling to play. Someone's getting hurt, and across from him is The Undertaker who has managed to endure and outlast multiple eras of WWE. So next up, we are playing FIFA 23. Here are the graphic settings. We've got it set to 1080p with no limit on the frame rate. Dynamic resolution scale is on and rendering quality is set to medium. Talking, of course, about Manchester United against Liverpool. And you can see the game looks and plays okay at around 35 frames per second peak. What a match this promises to be, Stuart. Chances on. Still alive. Really sound defending. Oh, it's gone in! A derby goal, the first of the contest. Although the cutscenes are kind of slow at 13 FPS, um, overall game is quite playable. Okay, so next game I'm playing is Undisputed. Graphic settings are set to 720p. We've got VSync off and overall quality set to medium. And you can see we're achieving around 35 frames per second average with the TDP peaking at around 29 watts. And you can see the Intel graphics are being pushed quite hard at 99%. And you can see the CPU temps are around 68 to 69 degrees. So playing all those Steam PC games should already give you a pretty good idea on the gaming performance. I also want to run a quick PS3 emulation test using my RetroStation hard drive. So the first game I'm playing is Grand Slam Tennis 2, 
with the default 720p resolution using RPCS3 emulator with the Vulkan backend. And you can see the game struggles to play at 21 FPS. You're in real, real trouble, so looking for a big first serve here and get a quick point. And next up we're testing Tekken 6 and this game is usually much easier to emulate and you can see we're able to play this game at a steady 60 FPS. And last one, Skate 3 which is quite a graphically intensive game so you need a pretty powerful system to be able to emulate this game and you can see it's absolutely struggling at 17 FPS. Switch emulation also struggles on this system. You can play everything else like PS2, PSP, Dreamcast, GameCube, N64. They all run absolutely fine. It's just the more graphically intensive systems that struggle to emulate. So that brings us to our benchmarks beginning with Geekbench single core score of 1602 and multi core score of 9589. This machine also achieved a Geekbench Vulcan score of 14,785. And in the Antutu benchmark test, we achieved 741k. And finally, here is the CPU benchmark score by Passmark, so we're achieving just over 17k. So let's see how this compares to the other mini PCs of this year. So here is my top performing mini PC chart for 2023, allowing you to see which mini PCs perform the best and also lets you compare these specs, features and prices. Now all the mini PCs on this chart are ranked by overall benchmark results. And I've also added two more useful categories for clock speed, bass and turbo and also maximum TDP. So as you guys can see, the B-Link SEI 12 Pro has achieved position 5 on this chart. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, that was the B-Link SEI 12 Pro, offering plenty of performance, connectivity and even some DIY upgrade options. And like always, great build quality from B-Link. This mini PC is great for general office applications, web browsing, playing AAA PC games through Steam, 4K video editing, desktop publishing, you name it, this mini PC can handle it. Furthermore, I always appreciate having some ports on the front. Thunderbolt 4 is a great bonus to have, and you also have triple 4K display output. The form factor is great, space saving design. My review and tests pretty much sum up what you can do with this mini PC and what it can handle gaming wise. So let me know in the comments what you guys think of this one. That's all for this video. Don't forget to like and sub. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.